So I'm here with two uh, world giants of backgammon, uh, Matt Cohn-Guy from the world team, who's giant number 15, and Raj Jansari from the UK, who's giant number 50-something. Um, so <laughs> yeah, lower down. <laughs> <laughs> so this is your position, Raj, I think. Can you explain a bit about the position for me? Yes, uh, well, we've got a great tradition um, in Nordic tournaments of having, um, after the main competitions are over, at the end of the day, a group of people get together and play chouettes and get pretty drunk, so drunk chouettes. And this position came up in one of those uh, drunk chouettes last night. Um, I was the box, so I'd, I'd cubed the guys um, on the opposing team. And Casper uh, uh, Nagel Nielsen was one of, the, uh, one of the guys on the other side. He was a captain of the opposing team. And he had a beautiful double aces to play here. He's in the air, but that's okay, because an ace comes in. Now we've got three more aces to play. And he pretty quickly decided that he'd play this, put me in the air, retired another man, split here. Now he's got lots of covers for the ace, picked up his dice. And um, I was surprised. I wasn't sure about this at all. And uh, I was pleased with his play because I didn't think it was the best play. And I said, hold on a second, what about this? And he uh, said, look, you know, Let's put this man in the air. Now, there's no blots to be hit. This guy's not shooting at anything. This can be picked up later. Um, you've only got, uh, what, 20 numbers to come in as opposed to 27 the other way. Um, and you make your, your ace points not fantastic, but you've got, you've got a four point board. And uh, there was a, he, he was completely um, up in arms and I said, no, no, my play is correct and I'll bet you on it. And there's a tradition of betting on positions as well. So he wanted to bet like 10 points. Um, and then uh, I was like, come on. And one of the other guys on his team, uh, the, the president of the Danish Backhand Federation, um, Freddie Bentler, said, no, no, I agree with Casper um, as well. I also bet 10 points on this. <laughs> so it's getting quite meaty. <laughs> now I'm beginning to doubt myself. I'm thinking, well, it looks pretty clear, but he's a very good player, so I'm not sure now, you know? So in the end, we, we, we had like a five point bet. I don't know, what are your views on this, Matt? Well, actually, you know, this move of just uh, hitting and making the ace point is pretty clear. I mean, uh, the other play is actually pretty horrible. <laughs> um, yeah, I the, think so. What's going to happen when you do this, usually you want to hit uh, the frontmost guy because it takes away the most in the race and uh, sends another guy back and it prevents him from making a four-point board. Um, That's what they must have been thinking. Right. The problem with this is that now you give him an ace to just equalize. A deuce is also good. Yeah. Um, Say so 27 uh, numbers to come in, right? Yeah, 27 numbers to come in. And uh, fan is uh, you still don't have the ace point. No. After you make this play of hitting and making the ace point, this isn't really a priming game and it's not really a racing game. You've got 12 guys in the zone, what we call the zone, which is uh, near White's home board. And he's just going for a closeout. Now 16 numbers fan, which is about half. So about half the time, you're going to be shooting at this guy and this guy, and it's just a huge redouble and a huge pass. <laughs> no. So, Matt, for you, this plays pretty easy. Yeah, I mean, you can see, uh, you know, um, you're just trying to blitz him. Yeah. I mean, he's got so many blots, and you've got uh, a bunch of checkers over there. Um, the prime is not really a threat because you've got this point, and... Uh, you know, if you can just uh, pick up three checkers, it's going to be really powerful. Yeah. I think So pretty much uh, all the points are pretty much equal in value. You know, the race is not really a concern. Um, what so the ace point is pretty valuable. Yeah. And taking away his potential anchor is also very valuable. Yeah, when, when things are very... Sometimes things are very clear straight away. Like this, when I was playing it, when I watched it happen, it was very clear that this, this was a wrong play and... You know, this was clearly the right play doing this. Um, but sometimes also when um, a few other good players say, oh, hang on, no, they disagree with you, <laughs> puts a bit of doubt in your mind as well. You think, well, you know, 
I've been drinking, it's late, <laughs> so maybe I've made a bit of a mistake. So that can, you know, that can also happen. It's one of those things. And in this instance, um, he changed his mind about the play pretty quickly because uh, he played this, and uh, mm -hmm. guess what I rolled next? Yeah, rolled. I rolled the same as him. <laughs> <laughs> and he immediately said, yeah, right, I agree with your play. <laughs> because look what happens now. <laughs> Okay, so you guys are both pretty clear. The Danes who are playing in your crazy shirt, they're going to lose their money. I'm pretty sure they're going to lose their, their money on this on this yeah. on this bet. Right. And, I, uh, I would like to get some. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great, thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you.